so far, all of the cards that we see here on the page, those are all powered by this HTML that sits right here within our crib listing component.html file. So our crib listing component has all of the elements necessary to display our data as we like. But what about the case where we'd potentially want to reuse this HTML in a different area of our application? Well, as it stands, we might have to copy everything here and put it into a new component and then basically reuse it that way. But this is far from ideal because if we want to make an update to something in our view, say that we want to add another property to be displayed below the address, well then we have to do it in two different locations. And that just creates problems for maintainability. What we can do to get around this, however, is we can create a dedicated component that is mostly just responsible for displaying data. So we can create a crib card component that will just take in some cribs data and then display it to the screen in the fashion that we're already doing here. So the first step to that is to create a new component. So let's go over here to the command line. And if you are wanting to stop the application and create your component in the same terminal window that you've already got open, feel free to do that. Otherwise, you can go into a new tab and just go into ng2 cribs and you can create it there. So here we'll use the Angular CLI again. We'll say ngg for generate and we want a component and we'll call this crib-card. All right, so everything got created. So let's go over and move things around here within our application. So what we'll want to do is we'll want to take our thumbnail. So everything from our thumbnail here, and that takes us to the end or the second last div on the page. We'll want to take all of this out and we'll want to put it into the HTML file for the newly created crib card component. So let's take out what's in there and paste in that thumbnail. And I'll just do a bit of formatting here. I'll back things up and take out that line. All right, so that looks pretty good. So this really is just everything that we've already had in place within our application, but now we're moving it over to its own distinct spot, its own distinct component. And the way that we can now make use of this is we can use the selector that exists for this component. So you see here the selector is app-crib-card. And we've already seen this at work really. If we go over here to our app.component.html, we've got app-crib-listing, which is the selector for our crib listing component. So when we call that element, what we're calling for is this component and the HTML that goes into it is part of it. So now what we can do is we can call on that new component. So let's say we want app-crib-card. And we'll take this class that existed before on this top level element and let's move that down over to our new component. So a problem exists here and that is that right now our component doesn't have any of the data that it needs to display. So if we looked over into our application here, all we get is this set of empty cards. And that's because we're iterating over our collection, which has six elements in it. And we're saying for each of those display a crib card component with a class of a column small four. And right now as it stands, there's no data going into it. So all we get is this kind of empty shell. So obviously we need to fix that up. And the way that we can do that is with what's called property binding. Now property binding is a feature of Angular 2 that lets us pass data into components. There's some other things that it does too, but for the purposes of our demonstration right now, let's consider it this mechanism that lets us pass data in. So what we can do is we can say we want to bind to a property called crib. So we're saying we want a property on this component called crib, and we want to pass to it the current crib that we're iterating over. So again, we've got a crib for each of the elements in our cribs collection. And on each turn of that, let's bind it to a property called crib. And so again, we can think of this right now as a way to pass data to a different component. Now there's one more thing we need to do though before this is going to work, and that is that we've got to pick up this bound property on the other end. We've got to pick it up in our crib card component. And for that, what we do is we go over to our component.ts file, and we have to say that we want to take that binding as input. So we've got this input class that comes from Angular Core. And what we do is we use it as a decorator. So we say, we wanna take some input, it's called crib, and we want to assign it to a property called crib. And right now what we'll do is we'll just type in this as any, but in a second, we'll see how we can create an interface for our crib data. 
So this input decorator says that we want to accept a binding called crib and we want to assign it to a local property here called crib as well. Now what this means is that anything passed in through this crib property is going to be assigned locally as crib and we can use that now in our view. And that's what we've done. We've used crib.type, crib.price, etc. So now in theory, we'll be able to see everything displayed as it was before. So there we go, we've got all of our listings showing up as they were before, but now we've got everything running through this very special crib card component. And this can now be reused in other areas of our application. So for example, in the future, if we had another area of our application where we wanted to display maybe one listing or two listings as a preview, we won't have to copy over all of that HTML and paste it into our new component. Rather, we can just reuse this already existing existing crib card component. And we're using it once here within our crib listing component. So just to recap, this is called property binding in Angular 2. We use it with square brackets and we say we want to bind a property called crib and we want to pass into it the crib that we're currently on in our iteration, in our ng4. And then that's picked up over here within our crib card component. We pick it up by name with the input decorator and then we assign it to a local property called crib. And then and because it is assigned to a local property called crib, we can use it here within our HTML. So one more thing to do here, let's take the CSS that we used over in our crib listing component. Let's just cut it out of there. And because it really belongs to the crib card component, we can paste it in there and everything will display as it did before. So that's really all we need to do to create a component that is used for display purposes. This is fully reusable now. We can even do things like we can adjust the total number of columns across that we want. And that'll be useful in situations where we potentially want other areas of our application to display the set of cards in a different fashion. All right, so that's just about it for displaying our cards. In the next video, we're going to talk about interfaces, and that's going to help us to do something better here than just providing this any type hint. Right now, we're saying that this crib property can have anything within it. It doesn't really matter what's in it, but we wanted to abide by a certain set of rules, and we'll see how to do that in the next video.